What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I got a special review for you today. Let's take a look at it. And let me know your thoughts as we go along. As you can see, we have a Jordan 4 box, but it's beautifully, beautifully wrapped in this olive green colorway. I love a special box. You guys know that already, right? But we got this white flight littering with the pale yellow jump man. Love the special box. Size tag reads Air Jordan 4 Retro SE Crab Medium Olive Pale Vanilla. Popping over the top, you do have this tissue paper with the cement splatter in it, a staple of the Air Jordan 4. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I'm beyond pleased to present to you the Air Jordan 4 Olive Crab. That's right, so if you're new here, first we talk about the shoe and then we talk about the shoe. Let's go ahead and get right into it. On the sole, you have a staple of the Air Jordan 4, this herringbone traction pad, which I believe this is actually the first time the herringbone traction pattern made its way to the Air Jordan. Of course, you have the black, white, pale vanilla, and a hint of gray at the forefoot as well as on the heel. I love the touch, I love the contrast, it's definitely a go. On the midsole, in addition to that visible air unit, you have a pale vanilla colored midsole. Very nice touch, again with the black that wraps around the forefoot. And then you come to the creme de la creme of the shoe, the actual olive colorway. And the thing about this particular shoe, it is a part of the craft series. I'll dive into that a little bit more later on. Well, I guess I'll do it right now because it actually makes sense to talk about why this is a craft shoe. First off, you're going to notice that you have two different materials around the forefoot as well as the heel. And on the eye stage, you have a nice long haired suede. Now, the suede's not too long itself. It's a nice shag to it, but it's definitely a suede material. Now, on the toe and on both the lateral and medial side, you have a new buff. I'm going to try to rub my finger on the new buff. You might see some changes there. I'm going to try to come on, zoom in here, see if you see some changes to the actual motion. I do like it about the shoes. The new buck is a nice touch here and it's better than the crafts that come before it. But we'll talk about that a little bit more later on. So more about the shoe. This particular release is devoid of an Air Jordan 4 staple, which happens to be the netting. Now the netting is on both the lateral and medial side, as well as on the actual tongue of the shoe. By this being a craft entry, this one does not have netting on neither the lateral nor the medial side of the shoe, nor the tongue. Additionally, there is this weird kind of patch here on the lateral side of the shoe, as well as an extra stitch down here by the forefoot. With that being said, the actual strap stabilizers or the wings of the shoe are actually also a leather material. And that leather material is a far departure from the polyurethane or rubber that's on a lot of Jordan 4s. And speaking of materials, again, you have the infamous Achilles cutters, this black pull tab that's in the back. I mean, this one's actually pretty rigid. I know a lot of people are not particularly fans of having this rigid uh, material back here, but you know what? I can deal with it and it's here. I mean, it's part of the Air Jordan 4. It's a staple, it's a thing. That back heel tab is this kind of dark grayish color. It's not all the way black, but does have that pale vanilla Jumpman on the back. Contrast, A+. Plus. And unfortunately, no Nike Air on the back. If you remember, Nike Air is typically reserved for OG colorways or collabs of some kind of sort. Not always the case, Trust me, there'll be more coming out that's gonna prove that wrong, but neither here nor there. The olive green suede tongue does have a black patch on it, again, with that pale vanilla jump man. And speaking of the back of the tongue, you have this Air Jordan patch that's on the back here that's upside down because apparently back in the 80s, they used to flip the tongues upside down and wear them like this. I mean, I guess the 80s was a strange time. I, I don't know. And if you take my word for it, there's a black insole on the inside with a pale vanilla jump man. And that's pretty much it as far as the shoe itself is concerned. Now, again, why Kraft? Well, the Kraft series is Jordan Brand's way of thinking outside of the box. This was, I believe, the first Air Jordan 4 Kraft to come out. As you can see, you had the stitch here on the forefoot as well as the patch here up on the back. Now, again, this is just their way of doing things a little bit differently. Thinking outside the box, giving us different materials, a feeling of hand-sewed craftsmanship. I mean, this is the Kraft series. Again, devoid of a netting here as well as on the tongue. Same thing with the Air Jordan 5 Craft. Different materials, just kind of thinking outside of the box in the way they're giving us these releases. So, so far, they have given us a Craft in the Jordan 1, the 2, and of course now two fours. I do believe there's a Craft 3 coming out sometime next year with both like a Jumpman and a Nike Air on the back. I think that's a Craft shoe. Either way, I think that's a must cop. But either way, let me know down in the comments, do you like what Jordan Brand is doing with the Craft series and that them thinking outside of the box, do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? So now I kind of want to address the elephant in the room, or maybe it's not even really there because the shoe I'm going to talk about, probably nobody can get their hands on. If you haven't guessed by now, I'm talking about the Air Jordan 4 Undefeated. Now, the Air Jordan 4 Undefeated was a shoe that's kind of similar to this. I'm going to go ahead and put it up here so you guys can see it. If I'm not mistaken, the Air Jordan 4 Undefeated was one of the first Jordan brand collabs with an outside entity. Of course, that being Undefeated. 
I went back and watched Mayer's video, and I think he said something along the lines of there were only 72 pairs made in total. And he happened to have a pair, and that pair I think is going for something like $25,000 right now, which is absolutely insane. That being said, here we have a shoe that kind of looks like it, but I don't want to do the designer of this shoe disservice, and I don't want to take anything away from the undefeated shoe. This shoe should stand on its own as a nice piece of craftsmanship. So what I want to do is appreciate this shoe for what it does for me as a collector and as a person who actually wears their shoes. As you can see, I like olive. I like green. I'm an earth tone kind of guy. So this shoe actually is right up my alley. An undefeated shoe notwithstanding, I like the shoe on its own. One thing I neglected to mention that this shoe does not come with a spare pair of laces. As you can see, it has an olive colored flat cotton lace. And those lace swaps are going to lead us to more undefeatedness but it just works and you'll see here in a minute. But again, I like the olive colorway and having this shoe for this price actually stops me from having to wear this shoe as much as I need to. Like I said, I have olive in my color, earth tones, and this shoe gets a lot of wear. So now I kind of have more olive options and I always say options are never a bad thing. But yeah, back to the lace swaps. Now for the price tag of $210, I feel like this shoe should come with more laces, especially for that $10 upcharge that it's probably the norm going forward. As I mentioned, this shoe does come with the olive colored lace as standard. On this particular shoe, I went ahead and added a pale vanilla lace, and I actually think it punches up the shoe a lot. It ties into the pale vanilla on both the tongue tack as well as the back and a little bit of the actual midsole. I like that one a lot. Now, thanks to the modern marvel of movie magic, I can take these laces and... And then, of course, we have the colors that the undefeated came with. This beautiful orange, this beautiful black, and I like both of these. I'm not even gonna sit here and lie. Both of these colors, probably especially this orange, it's nice. It's nice. They nice. I like them. I I like them. Now, part of me really didn't want to keep this orange one in here because I don't want people to think that I'm pretentious enough to believe that I'm wearing $25,000 pair of shoes on my feet. I mean, I'm not delusional. I know what these are. I know what they're not, but it just goes. I mean, it's orange and green just goes. It's black and green. It just goes. I mean, even the Travis Scott's come with a black and a yellow lace. So, I mean, it's conceivable that you could throw a yellow lace in here and it'll still look pretty damn good. But ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I'm giving you the lace swap options here on my desk instead of outside is because here in Florida, it has been raining like crazy and I do not want to risk messing the suede and the new buck up to give you guys on foot shots. Trust and believe when I say this shoe does look good on foot, but unfortunately, I can't do it today. Releasing for the price of $210 on November 18th, I think this is a pretty good pickup. Now that being said, we're in a weird space of sneakers where now everything is sitting. Things that previously used to sell out or be for high value on the aftermarket, now have cooled down or otherwise available to the masses. And that's actually a great thing. Nature is healing itself. But Jordan 4s have always been the exception. And I wonder if this release is gonna prove that statement to still be true. Me personally, I didn't wanna risk it. I wanna go ahead and get these shoes early and get it out of the way because I do not wanna have to fight or pay higher than resale for this shoe. But that being said, this has been the Air Jordan 4 Crab. Let me know your thoughts down below. Is this shoe one of the ones worth going after. You think it'll sit, you think you can wait to cop it at a later date. Whatever the case may be, I'm enjoying these and I hope some way, somehow you do too. Thank you guys for supporting me all year. I have a couple of more shoes on the way, especially ones that you're gonna wanna see. Definitely ones I want to add to my collection. I mean, everything I've reviewed is for the collection, it's for the foot, it's for the toe, so you know how that goes. This has been the Air Jordan 4 Craft Olive and I have been Jay Shoe Fanatic. Until the next one, I'm out of here. That's yellow. Oh, the original cut. There it absolutely is. I might like it better than the 2020 version. Oh, I'm right. And I had to have.